Now, taking photos of what you eat and posting them to forums like Instagram is a global social phenomenon that seems to be growing. Cloud eggs, unicorn frappuccinos and avocado toast all have one thing in common. Social media made them a hit. When it comes to food these days, the camera really does eat first. 208 million posts have been hashtagged food on the photo sharing app since it was founded in 2010. And restaurants, food growers and the retail market are paying attention. That's because making your product more appealing for sharing on social media makes business sense. When a trend catches on, it can have a big impact. Avocado prices are at their highest in data going back 19 years. Shares of Starbucks are near all-time highs too. And it's said the unicorn frappuccino coffee trend is a factor in that. All right, joining us now from London, Fern Potter, who's global digital partner at Carrot. Carrot's a network that provides digital and diversified media solutions. Welcome to Counting the Cost, Fern. What are we to make of the fact then that social media has this ability to move prices, to move markets, the, the, the prices of staple goods, commodities that we all use on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah, absolutely. Well, social media has uh, really exploded onto the scene in recent years. And I think we have to look for, first at how people have are looking at trust and their values. So they've moved from uh, trust in kind of state and government into trust in advertising and then through into trust in each other. So uh, the way of sharing and socialising media, um, sharing values. And uh, this has enabled businesses to really dig into the data and dig into how people are, are working with brands and how they consume brands to um, to monitor their supply and demand. And therefore, it's really an integral part of looking at the full supply chain of how they ensure that the food and commodities um, production is linked to actually what people want and their personal desires. Does, does this mean then that, that companies are having to, to figure in social media right from the start uh, of, of the supply chain now? They're, they're going to have to work out how products are, are going to be marketed and how people are, go are going to share uh, images in particular of day-to-day of, of -day staples. Absolutely. I think there's a, there's a definite need to, for companies and businesses to look into that data, to look at trends and targeting of how they can reach consumers and reach audiences in real time like never before. It can also inform new product development, um, the desires and wants of each of the consumers and how they're talking and sharing uh, photos and, uh, and food and interacting with that presence online. Um, it's created a bit of a globalisation. There's a want to... Uh, for validation of, of people's choices, but also how people experience can be can be widened and there's a breadth there. So companies really need to dig into that information to be able to inform their business choices and, and to be able to meet the supply and demand of, of the consumer. I think there's a definite uh, interest. We've seen Pop Sugar in the US, we've seen Amazon Prime come up, but there needs to be a link to e-commerce to, to enable people that are looking and searching online and using social media to go direct from the products that they enjoy, they like, and that they see in social media to purchase. And there's an immediacy which is, which is predominant in our generation with millennials. Personally, I, I, I can't think of anything worse than looking at pe uh, pictures of other people's food, but, but it's, it's remarkably <laughs> popular online, isn't it? And on Instagram, it, it's, it's, it is. there's a lot of people doing it. <laughs> to what extent is that, is that driving um, uh, the restaurant business as well, in that in the, the restaurants now are, are not just thinking about the way that their food tastes, but they've got to think of, mm. of the way the food looks, the, how it's served, the, 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 um, the crockery that it's mm. on, the way the table is laid out, the decor of the restaurant, because, of course, it's now become a visual experience as well as a, um, mm. a, a, a tasting experience. It's so true. I, I've seen recently in London a, a, a restaurant opening that's kind of Instagram ready so that you don't require filters, etc. And it is a new phenomenon. But people like to share. People want to social. They want validation through their friends. They want to experience other things that people haven't. And there's this whole culture of reviewing um, and being able to um, access something you, you wouldn't necessarily have done so before. Um, it is an ongoing trend, but I think that it's just the nature of how our society works at the moment. This social media provides a platform to have those conversations that, and in a, in a time poor generation as well. So essentially it's facilitating a conversation that we would have previously had around the dinner table. Really is fascinating. Fern, uh, really good to talk to you. Many thanks indeed for being with us today on Counting the Cost. Thank you very much.